Hey guys, what's up? What's going on? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, hi, hello, my name is Megan. And if you are returning, thank you guys so much for coming back to another video. I do truly appreciate each and every one of you guys. As a small YouTuber, when I say that I truly appreciate you guys, honestly, truly from the bottom of my heart, I do. It's, I love you guys so much and I love being able to share my life and what little bit of wisdom I have here for you guys. So this video, <laughs> has definitely been a long awaited video. And I apologize about that guys. I did post my first boob job vlog or boob job Q and A type deal informational video a couple of weeks ago. And I had full intentions of getting this up sooner, but you know what? I'm gonna use it in my favor. And how I'm going to do this video is I'm actually going to show you guys my first full week post-surgery, starting the day that I got my surgery up to the seventh day mark, actually it's the six day mark, so it's one full week. Um, and I did film most of those days, not from start to finish, but it was at least one video per day, a couple of minutes just to update you guys about how I was feeling day over day. I know I did miss maybe one or two of those days, and that's just because some things during that time frame really didn't change. So I didn't wanna tell you guys the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and then what I will do, because I haven't seen a lot of this footage since I originally filmed it, I'm going to show you a day, then react to it and let you guys know because I, so I actually did, if you guys can see here, make a ton of notes every single day um, that I was able to. So I can actually read it to you about how I was feeling and then give you reactions to the videos because there's, it's been six weeks. I'm be real honest with you guys. It's been six weeks since I've had my surgery and my feelings now about it are totally different than the first week post-surgery. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. And then at the middle to end of the video, I will be going into the Q and A portion and then giving you guys a six week update so you guys can see how I'm feeling now. Obviously, I'll give you a little sneak peek. Your girl's feeling pretty good because she's able to put on like a little bralette. But no supportive top here whatsoever. This is just a little bralette. And for you guys who are like super sensitive and are like, girl, put a top on. You shouldn't show yourself off like that. Do you wear a bathing suit out when you're going to the pool? Bikini, not bikini. Do you judge people like that? No. So don't judge me for sitting here wearing a cute little bralette from a workout company when I paid $6,000 for you girls. All right? All right. Cool, Gucci. Now, before I get into the video, please do me a favor, guys, and just hit the thumbs up button. All you gotta do is really just scroll right past the video, click the thumbs up button. It really does help me as a small YouTuber to push my YouTube videos out into the YouTube-verse. I keep saying that five million times, but I really do truly mean it. That's how the algorithm picks it up. Also, if you do find yourself coming back to my channel quite frequently, go ahead and click that little subscribe button right there. And then if you wanna be notified of when I do upload my videos, click the little notification bell that pops up right next to it. It will notify you of every single time that I do post, hopefully. <laughs> and without further ado, guys, we we are going to swing right into it. Okay, so how am I gonna do this? First things first, I don't know if you guys can tell, um, I had a little bit of an allergic reaction to getting my eyelash extensions done. I have a whole video about it when I did my DIY lashes and I thought that that was the reason why, but then I actually got my lashes done professionally and this eyeball did the exact same thing. So your girl's pretty sad because I think I don't, I don't think I can get eyelash extensions again after this, just, it's weird. Anyway, so that's why I'm wearing my glasses because I don't want to risk putting contacts in. So let's do this. I am going to play day number one. It's been a while since I've seen this. I think when I did day number one, it was post-surgery. I don't know if I filmed anything the day before. Let me play all of one day one and let you guys know how I was feeling. Hey guys, so I'm doing a quick little check-in here. It's currently, oh my gosh, I don't even have my watch, 2.46. Um, what time we get home, babe? Like 11? Uh, 10.30. Yeah, got home at like 10.30, 11. I took um, my pain medication like I was told to do. I tried to sleep, couldn't really sleep. Got up at 12.30, had some jello um, just to get something in my system and then took a pain medication because um, obviously it's a little tight and a little sore, but went back to sleep. I felt, I got really randomly sick. I didn't throw up or anything, but I got really, like a really bad cold, um, cold chill all over my body and like cold sweat. So I ran back into the bedroom, I laid back down and I went back to sleep and I forced myself to go to sleep. What? Oh, and I forced myself to go to sleep. Um, just woke up and I feel a million times better. Seriously, like I feel sleeping is the end all be all. It feels really good. Like I'm holding my phone up right now or my camera up right now and I feel totally fine. Worst part of this right now is honestly my throat because the tube they stick down your throat. What are you doing? <laughs> Setting oh. Um, is my, because they stick a tube down your throat so when they take it out, it's it's dry. And I feel like the dryness didn't kill me, but, <laughs> or didn't get to me, but the fact that I 
my body's trying to overcorrect the dryness and it's getting a little mucusy. So I was spitting a lot when I got home, but um, it's fine. I mean, I have a little bit of upper back pain, more tightness. Like I feel like I need to crack my back almost up top um, and super tight down here, but they look really good. I'm really impressed by how they turned out. Um, obviously I, I don't know if I was supposed to do this, but I did take my jacket off, the jacket that I wore to surgery, just so it had an open, a front open, um, a front <laughs> open zipper, just so I could get in and out easily. And I changed into this just now because I was super sweaty, but um, it was on fine. I feel great so far. I mean, I just feel normal. Like I've just been a little bit groggy. So that's the first update I'll be date you guys tonight. <laughs> Okay, so I just got done watching that. Let me back up a little bit. So I don't know how much of this I mentioned in my previous video because it's been a couple of weeks since I filmed it, but the day of your surgery, there's a couple of things that you need to do ahead of time just to inform you all in case you are going about um, trying to learn the best that you can about the breast augmentation process. So the morning of, um, I was the first surgery of the day. I believe I had to be there around 7.45 and I didn't film anything prior to actually getting to the surgical office. So my first surgery, I think I had to be there at 7.45 which means I got up at six. You cannot eat that morning. That's the biggest thing pretty much with any major surgeries that you have or really any surgeries that require you to be put under anesthesia. You cannot eat or drink anything after midnight the night before. So the night before I did take one antibiotic because you do have to start taking your antibiotics the night before. One of them then the morning of they tell you get up and only drink enough water to get your antibiotic down. And it should only be maybe at most a shot glass full of water. Um, and it is a pretty big pill. So just keep that in mind guys. So I am somebody who back then, uh, back then, like it was 15 years ago, back then I was the type of person that when I get up in the morning, I have to immediately drink coffee and immediately eat breakfast or I get super hangry. But I didn't really feel that the, that morning because I was, I was nervous. I was very nervous about getting my breast augmentation done. Um, not so much actually the procedure, but I was more worried about getting put under anesthesia. I've never had issues with it before, but you never know. You hear horror, horror stories, right? So I took my antibiotic. Um, I packed a little bag because they do tell you to pack a bag and to wear loose clothes. You do have to wear loose baggy clothing because the nurse will dress you after your, your procedure because you are going to be out of it literally so out of it so far gone. There's even times now where I'm thinking back to post surgery when I was waking up that I'm like, I get little clips of it. It's kind of like if you black out after drinking a lot from a long night of drinking and you slowly over time start getting your memory back. And that's kind of like what it is when you're waking up from anesthesia. So I got there 7.45. I wore a white zip up with, uh, I think I had a sports bra on and I wore underwear with this. That is a thing that I didn't know it's work wear your underwear because when you actually go into the surgery, um, you do have to keep your underwear on, but they're going to give you like a little, what is it called? Like a little cloth robe thing that put that you put over. Cause when you get to the office, you get there at 745. My surgery wasn't until nine, I don't think. And the surgery does range from like half an hour to an hour, depending upon everything. So in the meantime, you go in. This is when coronavirus was a really big thing. And at the time that I'm telling, talking to you guys right now, the coronavirus has kind of hit a second wave in Houston. So we're kind of dealing with this right now. But a lot of medical offices and, and my cos cosmetic surgeons office as well would not lick Nick in. So he dropped me off at the door and the girl was like, yep, come pick her up at 1030 or we'll give you a call a uh, half an hour ahead of time to come pick her up. And um, that's about it that you, they walk you in, you have to get your temperature and they actually put like a little bit of a sticker right here. That's actually them taking your temperature to make sure your temperature does, doesn't spike or go too far down. I give you a face mask. I had to roll in and then you sit in the little surgeon's chair and you're meeting with the nurse. The nurse has to um, give you like ask you a bunch of questions so she's gonna ask you okay what are you here to do i obviously told her i'm here to get a breast augmentation and she said okay she, they know the answers to this guys they just want to make sure that you're in the right state of mind and they confirm the size that you're going with so at that time obviously i told her 400 cc's high profile they put your iv drip in because you do need to have an iv in obviously before you go into surgery and this was so bad guys i don't mind needles whatsoever but i haven't had an iv in i don't even know how long and they tried to put it in my hand on my right side because that's where the iv bag was was on my right side and they got it up this side and for some reason i guess they couldn't get it in so she had to take it out which hurt like a bitch then we tried on one of my veins in here put it in the same thing happened i guess something my blood wasn't working the way that they wanted it to so they had to pull it out then they had to go on the other side and poke me again that was the worst worst thing of the day <laughs> okay that's 
I just want to warn you that it can happen. They could poke you numerous times. What was great though, is that after I met with the um, doctor and the surgeon just to go over everything, they do obviously mark you up and say, okay, here's your line here. Here's your line here. I don't know what it does, but they just talk to you, see how you're doing, how you're feeling. Um, my nurse hit me with it hard. She was like, you ready for your IV cocktail? And I was like, what the heck is an IV cocktail? <laughs> so they inject you with a little bit of medication as well as your second antibiotic of the day into your IV. Um, and the cocktail is supposed to like ease your nerves a little bit, which I needed. I was absolutely so, so, so nervous going into surgery. The IV drip medical cocktail thing they give you makes you feel like a little bit drunk, but makes you feel like pretty okay about the fact that you're gonna go get surgery. And if you just don't wake up, you're feeling a little drunk, so it's totally fine. <laughs> And then they actually walk you into the surgical room when you're ready for surgery. I was not prepared for that either. And I did mention this in my previous video, but I didn't know that you actually walk into the surgeon's, surgeon's um, table. Like you walk in, it looks scary as shit because you're walking up to the table that you're going to get operated on. They ask you to lay down. I don't remember a lot of that because I remember walking halfway down the hallway and then that medical cocktail thing must've kicked in because I got really, really, really like, it felt like I had had like 10 drinks by that point. They lay you down on the table and then I guess they do whatever they need to do to get you to pass out. Cause I remember, I think that, I don't remember. For, next thing I knew I woke up. I woke up and the lady was dressing me. She had put my pants on, put my socks on and rolled me out to Nick. And then I, I do slightly remember <laughs> watching this footage is pretty funny because I do slightly remember being in Nick's truck and not remembering much or not being able to say much other than the fact that it felt like I had two boulders on my chest. Like it felt like, it just felt like I had done a ton of chest presses with the barbell. So if you guys are weightlifters, you'll know what I mean. Like it just, it looks like, it felt like I pushed my body to full exhaustion by bench pressing or just doing a ton of push ups, and my body just couldn't take it. It wasn't sore, it wasn't tight, it just felt tired. When I got home, oh buddy, okay. They tell you as soon as you get home to take a two hour nap. I'm not a napper. I can't fall asleep in the middle of the day. So it took me forever to fall asleep. I laid in bed for about an hour and a half and I couldn't go to sleep. So I was like, you know what? Screw this. I got up and I was going to just sit on the couch and try to watch some TV. Cause I even had Nick black out my windows, just like hang up um, a couple of dark blankets that we had to cover the windows. Cause we don't have like blackout curtains. And I got up, I went to the kitchen and I was still kind of like a little bit out of it. But by this point I had kind of come to consciously. I went into the kitchen and then all of a sudden, I don't know what it was. I didn't feel sick at all prior to this, but it was like, as soon as I stood up and actually started walking, I immediately felt really, really, really nauseous. I did not throw up. I did not throw up though. I just got a wave of, oh my God, I'm going to throw up. I got immediate cold chills and I got a cold sweat all over my body. It was nearly instant. So I just remember running, running, running back to the bedroom because all I wanted to do in order to stop myself from throwing up was just lay down. So I lay down in bed and that was it. I did end up taking a nap because I was like, I just need to force myself to fall asleep. So I took a nap. Um, woke up a couple of hours later to what you guys just saw, which was my post-surgery at home check-in, I guess. And I felt fine. My back did hurt. It wasn't, it wasn't as painful as what you will see in the coming days, but it felt like the tightness that you feel when you have to crack your back like that. I don't know how to describe it. Like you just need to, if you were to turn a little bit, your back would go kr, 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 and I couldn't do it because I couldn't really move, but I wasn't in pain. You do have to sleep at a semi lifted setting. So I did have um, four, while I was sleeping, I did have four pillows to prop me up and then two pillows on each side to prop my arms up. That was an adjustment. I don't know if I should have done this, but I did fall asleep in the zip up that I, um, that I wore to the surgeon's office and back home from the surgeon's office. And it was just way too hot. So I just took it off and I put like a, just a regular shirt back on and I felt fine. I mean, I was pretty Gucci the first day. It was, it was, I was probably, I was pretty much rocking and rolling. I was fine the rest of the night. I felt okay. Obviously I felt like tightness in my chest. I didn't do much. I think all I did was sleep the rest of that day, but I felt pretty fine. So let's move on to the second day. Cause the second day is where things get a little bit tricky. Nick was with me the first day, but he did have to go back to work the second day, um, which I got my surgery done on Thursday, Friday. He had to go back to work because if you guys don't know this, Nick is a GM at Lifetime, which is a gym and the, the Lifetimes in Houston were opening up that Monday. And we didn't know that they were opening up until I think it was like a day or two before my surgery. So he had to go back to work. So I was on my own for the next day. So let's roll into it. I'm sorry, I don't have too many notes on the first day. I just am going off of memory here because I was too out of it to make notes. So let's roll to day two. 
good morning guys it is now the day after surgery so day two lucy stop my little girl is here um last night sucked like big time it was not fun sleeping um, I took a Norco before bed um, and an antibiotic. Well, I took a Norco about an hour before I took my antibiotic before bed. And I tried to go to bed really early just because I was super tired. But I am very, 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 very sore today. And I was up pretty much all night. I woke up at like 2. I thought it was like 5 because I had waken up so many times that I was like, it has to be 5 o'clock in the morning by now. And it was only 2 o'clock. Um, but my back was killing me from sitting, from not sitting straight up, but... From not being able to lay on my side and all that. Um, I'm pretty short of breath. Just because obviously I have two boulders sitting on top of my lungs that normally aren't there. And then I'm very swollen, obviously, up here. But what's weird is... Um, well, so then I got up at like 3 because I couldn't take the pain anymore that I took. And I took a muscle relaxer at 3, which was... We had to count it because I went to bed at 8. It was like 7 hours in between my medication, so I was fine doing that. Took a muscle relaxer at three and then that helped a little bit but not m much with the pain obviously um it's now 8 53 so it's been about six hours so i can take i had to take my antibiotic about a couple minutes ago before i ate i'm gonna eat my breakfast take another ibuprofen but i'm sorry to go into all the medication details i did my stretches the stretches don't hurt like at all they don't hurt but um one thing that was weird is i when i was doing my stretches when i would get my arm up like i can hear little crinkly crunchy sounds up here it's almost like when your body is releasing it, just, it sounds like fluid to be honest like so it's it's swollen i know it's swollen but we call the doctor they're not in office yet for another couple minutes but i'm hoping that it's normal because i hear it on both sides and it sounds like water is swishing but not but at the same time it sounds like a crinkly sound but i am very swollen up here so i'm assuming that that's what it is so I'll let you guys know what the doctor says. Um, I hope I don't have to go back in today because it's a fucking half an hour drive to get over there and I'm just, I'm not comfortable. I don't know why they call this a rapid recovery. Maybe today's supposed to be the worst day. I mean, I'm used to in workouts having DOMS, which is delayed onset muscle soreness. So that could be it. Plus I still was like being pumped with anesthesia yesterday. So a lot of my pain was probably being dissipated by that. But today's very painful. Today, today's, a, today's a rough one. I'll check back in soon. Okay, update, still day two, the day after surgery. I just got a shower and it says to do everything normally, at least in the packet that they gave me, to try to do as much normal activity as possible. So I'm gonna try to, try to put on a little bit of makeup today, edit a um, video, but ibuprofen helped a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot with the pain. I should take another antibiotic in an hour from now, but yeah, I will tell you guys, the first time that you take your wrap off, oh, it's a shock. My boobs look, so square like square and almost like torpedo like <laughs> that it's it's a little alarming but the nurse did say that's gonna happen it's gonna, they're gonna look really weird for a couple of weeks um until they finally settle where they need to go or need to be but not to be like alarmed but it's a little alarming <laughs> so for you guys who are gonna get this done it's kind of like if you've ever gotten your lips injected for the first time or if you've ever gotten them done in the past where they swell up a lot and you're like oh um i'm kind of having that realization like oh my god Oh my god, they're really big. I'm curious to see what they're going to look like, but that's a nice little update. It's only been a couple of hours since I updated you guys, so I probably won't check in for the rest of tonight unless something drastic happens. I'll probably just wait it out until like tomorrow or the next day to update you guys next. Oh, okay, so I don't know how many times I'm going to stop here and explain everything to you guys. You guys can tell I was in a lot of pain day two in the morning because I didn't sleep at all the night before. I felt really bad because I ended up getting nick up a couple of times. The end of day one, I took a Norco as well as a muscle, uh, and I didn't take a muscle relaxer because I wanted to try to push through as much as possible, but I ended up taking a muscle relaxer midnight, not at midnight, but around like two or three in the morning because I could not sleep. It was a mixture of having to sleep sitting up which was horrific because I am naturally a stomach sleeper and I had to train myself to sleep on my back and not even on my side. I could not turn whatsoever. So I didn't get any sleep because of that. And my back was killing me. The next morning, I think I was in a lot more pain. One, because I didn't have my anesthesia in my body anymore. It had pretty much not fully worn off, but had worn off a little bit by then. Two, my back was just freaking killing me. And three, I didn't get any rest. So by the time I got up, uh, Nick had already gone to work, so I had to start doing things by myself. The good thing was he really helped me out. So this is where I kind of give you guys, and where I really wanna give you guys advice. Please try to get somebody who can help you out. This is not the time for you to be a big, strong, independent woman because you really shouldn't be. 
even with little things like getting out of bed or getting into it, getting out of a chair, you're going to need help with. For the first a couple of days, I do remember that I had to get help from Nick to even like get out of bed. Um, and I have a recliner that I sit in in the chair, but I always have this really bad habit of when I sit up from a chair, pushing myself up with my arms. It's just something I've done my entire life that I couldn't do because it just hurt too much. And you don't even realize how much, even if just touching your putting pressure on your arm affects this muscle right here. Um, and that was really tight. So that morning was rough. Something I forgot about because I was intubated, which means when you get, when you go under, there's two type of intubations. I think it's pre COVID they would only partially intubate you, which means they would put the tube only par partially down your throat, which is less damaging and less like, dangerous, I guess you could say long term. But because of COVID, there was a lot of restrictions about how they have to do things. I didn't ask too many questions about it, but I just got fully intubated, which means they put the tube fully down your um, throat. So what I remember from the day of, and I'm sorry to go back a day, but what I remember from the day of is that my throat was super, super, super dry from being intubated that I just wanted water and I wanted something to get rid of that. The next day though, you could hear my voice is super crackly because I there's things can get damaged when they intubate you um and it's not necessarily even the fault of the anesthesiologist because they are fully trained to do that it's just it's your own biological makeup how small your tube is or however whatever this is called that's down here where they stick the tube down uh, how how what your biology is what the makeup is how your body responds to it right so i was worried about losing my voice long term and you guys will see closer to the end of this video but I feel like I gotten a lot of my voice back, but that was a bit of a shock to me was the fact that I had, I had pretty much lost my voice by this point. The second day, I tell you 24 hours after your surgery, take a shower and to remove your wrappings. I wasn't prepared for this. I thought I had to have my wrapping on at all times, but because I was doing rapid recovery and my surgeon doesn't like to have, doesn't want you to wear a post-surgical bra whatsoever, anything or anything really to hold them into place. They said to go ahead and remove my wrapping, jump in the shower and lightly wash myself off. I did wash my hair the day before my surgery though. So I didn't have to worry about washing my hair, but they want you to actually go through your normal daily routine. So I did when I hit 24 hours, I think it was around like 11 or 12. I just jumped in the shower. I took my wrapping off. I was scared. When I saw my body for the first time, I was freaking out, but I knew that I was how that I was going to look really scary, so I didn't completely judge it. But having two big boulders on my chest were so 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 scary. Also, with your chest pressing against it, your your breasts sit up really high and mine were square. Okay? When I say they were square, they were square. Like I looked like my boob was square from the the because it was pushed up, like I can kind of still push it up here if you guys can see the implant. Um, my breasts were sitting up here, so they've dropped quite a bit in the past six weeks, but they were square. They look like torpedoes. They look like little Madonna boobs. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put a picture up here, but they looked pointy, straight. And because I was in pretty much the best shape of my life two days before my surgery, <laughs> um, I had a little itty bitty body and big, massive square tits that looked fake. So I was freaking out a little bit. I was super tired. I was groggy, but I went about my normal routine. They also have you do these stretches where you have to go put your arms down and go straight straight up five times and this is all you do. They have to have your back of your hands touching together. I believe it is not like this. For the first day I was going like this with my hands together and then Nick was like, nope, you're not doing it right. Back of your palms have to touch because this is the better stretching. Um, you are supposed to move. You have to, have to, have to move. Do not pick up a lot of things though, okay? Don't do your laundry. Don't put your dishes away. Don't do anything that's more than five pounds, but do get moving because your body, that's the way that your body is going to recover quicker. I am up probably about five pounds right now um all just because of like water weight and um just swelling and i'm sure like a couple of those pounds are probably from the actual implants themselves just because obviously i'm putting more, something more into my body so i'm going to weigh a little bit more but i'm fine holding the camera um i slept last night like i told you guys earlier i will tell you the one thing that really 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 sucks right now is that i still haven't gone to the bathroom so i've peed obviously quite a few times because I'm trying to drink a bunch of water just to, <clears throat> just to flush all the swelling out 
um, cause that's what everybody's told me to do. To get rid of water weight, you have to drink water. So that's what I've been doing. I did have Chinese food last night, which is very, very, very high in sodium. Probably shouldn't have had, have had that if I wanted to flush it out, but I just, I did not want to cook and I just wasn't in the mood to cook and neither was Nick. So I still have yet to go number two, which is very common after a surgery, especially when you are taking narcotics. I didn't take narco yesterday, I believe, did I? I might have taken one in the morning, so that could also be why. Um, I only have four more things of antibiotics to go through, so I just took one right before I started filming, and then I have to take two more today, and then two more tomorrow. And then I'll be done my antibiotics, but I'm probably still just gonna use the, the ibuprofen for painkiller purposes. But I am gonna send Nick out today um, when he's on his way back from work just to go grab a stool softener because that still hasn't happened. And I feel like that's also what's retaining a lot of my bloating right now. I am still wearing like baggy shirts. Um, these, this is actually looking really tight because I'm still really swollen up here. Um, Nick spoke to my doctor earlier just because I, I wanted to see if I could start wearing a sports bra. Um, for the doctor that I went to, he specifically doesn't like having bras afterward because he wants your boobs to drop naturally. But this morning I was just feeling a lot of pressure under here and not, it wasn't pain, but it was a lot of pressure. So I wanted to see if I could wear like a light sports bra. And when Nick got a hold of the doctor, the doctor said it's totally fine if I wanted to wear one, um, just like when it was super uncomfortable, but to try not to at least up until the two week appointment. So I tried putting one on after I got out of the shower and it was fine. Um, but I feel like I'm probably just gonna wait to hold off and wear the sports bras during the nighttime when I'm actually sleeping. Because when I'm sleeping, like I don't want my boobs to like go wild and crazy, you know, like flop one side or the other. <laughs> I was also cleared to start taking my supplements again. So I did have protein powder yesterday, same protein powder, protein powder that I always drink, which is um, the Lifetime Vegan Max. Um, not the all-in-one because that does have a multivitamin in it. But if I wanted to start taking the all-in-one today, I could. I can start taking my multivitamins again. I am gonna have Nick go pick up the Ghost Lime Greens so I can get more greens into my system as well as a stool softener just so I can start using the bathroom sooner rather than later. Um, I am trying to eat exceptionally clean at this point just because I can't work out. So I think that by tomorrow, is that what they said? I think that because I'm doing the rapid recovery method, if I wanted to start working out by Monday, I could. I can start doing like cardio, light cardio. I can walk um, and do like the elliptical, but I can't do the arm elliptical. I'd have to hold on to it where it's stable. I can't run obviously because it's putting too much pressure on the breasts and I can't do heavy lifting, but I can start doing like body weight squats, lunges, that sort of things, things that aren't actually going to impact anything up here. So I think I might start doing that as of Monday. Just, I was gonna go for a couple of walks today, but it was pouring rain all night last night and I think it's gonna rain pretty much. It's supposed to rain all day today. It's supposed to be raining right now, but it's actually not. So um, I don't wanna start walking and then it start thunderstorming. <laughs> so I might hold off and go on a couple walks tomorrow and just from here on out every single day, just do three walks a day to keep my calorie count up. I'm feeling pretty good. As of right now, I know that by the end of the day, I'll probably feel a little bit off, but I might get a little bit of light cleaning in today. Our bedroom is a mess so far. Pretty okay, I just want my bloating to go down. That's honestly, the bloating is the worst part, um, especially when you are a fitness freak and you're like super involved in your physique. I know it's super vain to say, but I am very lean and I'm used to being very lean. I'm not used to holding on to more weight and feeling like I can't fit into anything right now is literally just like such a mental struggle. But I'm hoping that once I go to the bathroom, all of that will kind of die down. So I'll check in later today or tomorrow if I feel like there's been any changes. So of only day three, Megan knew, or technically it's day two post-op. It's day three totally, but day two post-op. If only she knew what was to come. Ugh. Hey guys, hopefully you can hear me. I'm sitting outside. Oh, well, I'm just got outside. Um, <clears throat> today is day three post-op. I, it's Sunday, so yeah, day, day three. <sighs> I will tell you that I, it's very windy. I wasn't expecting it to be windy. Yesterday was a hard one, especially at nighttime. I was went through that regret phase of, oh my God, what did I do? Because my boobs look very, very, very square and everything is super swollen and it's just very uncomfortable at this point. The swelling went down a little bit this morning, but I went for a walk. I did like a two mile walk, nothing intense, but just, just to get moving since I'm so used to exercising as often as I am. I want to at least keep my body semi-active. Oh shit, it's too windy out here. Hopefully you guys can hear me a little bit better now. I went for a walk a little bit earlier today with Nick. We did a two mile walk. 
um, took our time. I think it took us like 35 or 40 minutes just to get around because I wanted to get active. And I think that just from all the movement and um, just from like eating food and stuff, I got really bloated again, so I'm really uncomfortable. My boobs look a little bit more natural today. Like they're starting to drop like a little bit, but they're still very, very, very swollen. But as I was saying last night, I definitely had a freak out moment. Like I was so over it. When you are used to being as small of a person as I am and working out as much as I do, um, to make sure that you stay super lean and I'm still eating like super healthy and the fact that like you see your body a certain way I gained like six pounds in a day after getting my boob job and it's not all boobs obviously it's a lot of swelling and a lot of water weight and it's just hard to see myself in a completely different light because like I look like I just ate I've been eating 100 donuts a day for <laughs> two months um, but let me flip you guys around and show you I am wearing we just got back from eating lunch, but you guys can tell, like, look how bloated I am. If I try to suck it in, like, ugh, like this is me sucking it in. I can't suck any of this in. This is all just bloat. Like I literally look just pregnant. And I don't have any abs anymore. I literally, I just feel so uncomfortable because when I bend down, I get this, it's just a lot. It's a lot to handle right now. Honestly, last night I was just at the point where I was like, you know what, Nick, just contact the doctor, tell him I want to get them removed because I don't like feeling this way. Um, and I know I just got the surgery done like three, four days ago, but it's just, I can't imagine feeling this way for, there's just, there's just no end in sight. Like, I don't know when I'm actually gonna start feeling normal again. I know they say that this happens in the first seven days and then it goes away after seven days, but like because it's already been so long and day over day, it doesn't seem to be getting that much better. It's hard to really think that there is gonna be an end and it's just like, it's a lot. So <sighs> that's kind of where I'm at. I'm obviously not gonna do anything um, drastic, but I'm just really uncomfortable right now. Um, I did take my last anti antibiotic today around noon. I did take another ibuprofen though. I think I'm gonna keep taking my ibuprofen at least twice a day because it doesn't hurt, but it is still sore. Like right now it just kind of feels like I pulled muscles. So if, again, if you're a weightlifter and you like weight lifts and you lift weights, you'll understand what I'm saying when I say that it feels like you pulled a muscle, like you just overworked it too much. They're not, I'm not like in pain or anything, but it's just, it's a little sore and things are just very uncomfortable honestly right now i'm just i'm over it at this point this is the stage where i'm just like done with it i'm over it i would rather go back to just having no boobs than feeling how i'm feeling right now yeah so <laughs> day four was mentally physically i felt better um let me just go through the notes so i can i can make this video a little bit shorter so i noticed a little bit of under boob numbness which i didn't mention in my video i really anytime i touched anything under my boob not even my nipples but under my boob i couldn't feel it um and i knew that was gonna happen i just thought you know maybe i just can never feel my under boob again it whatever it is what it is extreme bloating you guys saw day three post-op slash day four the day is a little bit weird i didn't really i think when i wrote these notes i didn't count day one as day one i considered day one post-op that friday so sunday which is the ones that you guys just saw nick and i went out to eat we went to go grab some mexican food because that was the first weekend that things started to open up well russian started to open up around us i didn't even have anything that was super high sodium i had some guacamole and i wanted to eat some chicken fajitas i had like maybe a quarter of them but i was just i felt so uncomfortable you guys can see how bloated i was i looked and I felt like I was five or six months pregnant, at least what I envisioned that to be, because I've never actually been pregnant before, but I felt so, so, so uncomfortable in my body. And this is where I touch base on the fact that if you are used to seeing your body a certain way, that is the biggest struggle to get past because you're not gonna feel like yourself. I didn't feel like myself. I didn't feel cute. I didn't feel sexy. I didn't feel anything other than complete regret because I hate hated how my body looked and felt at the time. Um, by this point though, my boobs had slowly started to drop and one of my boobs started dropping a little bit faster than the other one. I believe that it was my, it wasn't a lot, but they slowly, you could see the difference because up here, my boobs were like sitting up here. The left one was still sitting there and this one started to slowly drop a little bit more, but they were still very square. Um, I was able to go for a walk because I feel like the first couple of days, not being able to be physically active really hindered my mental um, state as well. So we went for a two mile walk with the dogs and I felt a little bit better after that, but you guys can see like it didn't help my bloating, none of that. Be prepared for that. So yep, boobs dropped a little bit. No more swelling or crunchiness in my chest. But by that point, the I didn't have any crunchies up here, maybe like a little teeny tiny bit if I really moved all around, but it wasn't up here, it wasn't up here. 
all of the crunchiness was in my belly from the bloating. That's where the bloating came from because it takes time for it, the swelling to move down. And when the swelling and the fluid moves down, it really does move down. So where all the bloating was, you touched it, it sounded like bubble wrap. Um, I slept again that, that night and I did take my last antibiotic that day. So that Sunday, but I did still take ibuprofens that day. I just took one at midday and then one at night. I got rid of, I never really took a, I didn't take another muscle relaxer again. I didn't take a Norco again, um, but I was able to go to the bathroom by this point because I did take medical magnesia and there wasn't much that came out, but a little bit came out. So it helped me a little bit with how I was feeling, but not not the greatest. So roll into the next days, guys. Hey guys, so it's now day four post-op. I promise you it actually is. I know I wear the same shirt in a lot of different um, days, but I used to work at Lifetime in case you didn't know that. So I own like 15 of these t-shirts. Today's a rough one. I felt totally fine up until maybe like half an hour ago. I just think that I was pushing it a little too hard. I woke up uh, I, well, first of all, I didn't sleep fantastically. Fantastically? Is that even a word? I don't even know. <laughs> um, I didn't have a great sleep last night. I woke up a couple of times because I drank like a ton of water yesterday. <sighs> oh, goodness. Um, <clears throat> so I slept in pretty late today. I got up around like 9.30. And I just, I felt fine. Like I didn't take, I didn't need to take any medication this morning. I got up, I had breakfast, and then I went for a walk. I took my dog for a walk. Um, a pretty long one. I did uh, about a mile, almost two miles, like 1.75 miles. So it wasn't as long as the, the walk that I did yesterday, but it was much hotter. So I think that that mixed with when I came home, I like immediately took a shower. I, and I just started doing housework, not heavy housework, but just housework that I thought that I would be able to do, which I think that I ended up just doing way too much to be really honest, because my back's really hurting right now. Like it, it, I feel a lot better when I lean forward. Um, like this, just to kind of let, let my boobs hang, honestly, to get the pressure off my back. But I was feeling nauseous about an hour ago after I did the housework. I don't feel nauseous now, but my back is in a lot of pain. Yeah, I just think I did too much. I, I did the laundry. So I didn't like actually pick up the basket to do laundry, but I kind of went, I went back and forth from the bedroom like three or four times just to get a bunch of clothes to throw them into the washer. I did the dishes, but I also didn't like take them in stacks. I did like one plate at a time or one cup at a time, just so I could stay below the poundage limit of lifting. In terms of like my mental state and how I'm feeling about it, I'm kind of back to the state I was in on day two post-op, which was I had a little bit of a freak out earlier. Before I went on my walk, because when I went on my walk, I did put on a sports bra that I've had for a while. So it was super loose because um, I'm not supposed to wear any tight garments right now. I looked at myself in the mirror um, and I hate how my boobs look right now. Like honestly, I, I hate them so much. I, I'm just at the point where I can't envision what they're going to look like. Um, I definitely had like a, a mental breakdown where I was like, I just, I hate them. I hate them so much. They're super square. When I turn to the side, I don't know if I can really like show you guys properly here. Like they're a good size for my body. Uh, if I stand up, they're like a, overall a good size for my body. And because I'm so used to wearing the Victoria's Secrets bombshell bras, cause I've been wearing them every single day for the past three or four years. They're right now they're the same size my body would have been or my boobs would have been had I been wearing the sport, the, the bombshell bra from the side. Um, and from the top, they look good, but from the front on, they're super square. They're very boxy. I literally look like SpongeBob because my body's just like straight up and down. And it's like, it's a mental game. I don't, I'm just having a really bad day. I like to the point where I had Nick, um, call the office because I just was not in a mental state to, to call them myself. I had Nick call the office just to be like, Hey, is this normal? If it's not, like, can we get her in to get an examination? Um, if she hates her boobs, can she get them removed at some point? Like, what's the earliest time frame that she can get them removed? Because right now I was at the, before the, he talked to the person, I was at the point where I was just like, please, I, I don't even care if I need to get them removed next week, a month from now, like, I just, I don't want them in me. Literally before he was even able to bring up all of the concerns to the, um, to the nurse who he spoke to, the nurse was like, hey, let me guess. She feels like she looks like a linebacker, like she looks boxy, like she looks square, like, they, like she just looks like they're too, they're too much right now. And he was like, yeah, like, how did you even know that those are, like, those are literally the words that she said was a linebacker. And that's kind of how I had described it to Nick before he even got a chance to bring it up. So it makes me feel good knowing that a lot of other people call in with the exact same concerns because 
over time they'll drop and I know that they're gonna drop, but today is just, I just feel very unattractive. I try so hard to look a certain way and to be happy with my appearance by like super invested in my health and fitness that I, you know, I got to a point with my health and fitness where like I really liked my body before all of this and I just feel like I'm at the worst point right now with my body because I'm super bloated for one. I'm not as bloated as I, as I was yesterday, but I am still very bloated to the point where I can't see any of my abs, which is super frustrating. If you're a lifter, you'll understand like when you work as hard as I do to be able to see abs and you eat as clean as I do to be able to see abs. Like, so for me, it's, it's a mental struggle to be like, oh my God, you know, I, I'm eating so clean, like, and it's such a freaking struggle because I'm eating so clean right now, but I'm not seeing the results that I saw a week ago because my body's not where it was, obviously. And I, again, I get that it's just, it's a struggle. It's just, it's, I, I, get, I get that it's normal, but it's just a lot. So like, I haven't put self tanner on since for like a week. So I'm super pale. So I'm bloated, I'm super pale. I have no nails on. I can't work out. So workouts for me aren't just, to make myself look good. It's also to get into a good headspace because if I don't normally start my day with a workout, I get really foggy minded. I'm not like super clear. It's just working out for me is just how I have always kickstarted my day for the past 10 years I've been doing this. So I feel like a big piece of myself isn't there. It's like something out of my routine is missing. Me not working out in the morning is kind of like some, I don't know. It's like me not taking a shower, me not brushing my teeth. So it's just like, I'm mentally not in the right state right now. Um, and again, I, I know that I'm gonna get past it. Today's just really hard. It's just, it's really fucking hard. To the point where like I, like I haven't even shown Nick what my boobs look like right now. I haven't really worn anything that's low cut because I don't like what they look like. I haven't even filmed another YouTube video because I hate, hate, hate what they look like so much. Just can't wait for them to drop. And I still haven't gotten my voice back, which is something else. I still, like my voice sounds pretty normal, but there's times where if I don't talk for five, 10 minutes, and then I start to talk, my voice gets very raspy and, and I, it's very hoarse and it starts to skip a beat. So I'm still having like side effects from when they intubated me. Um, so that's freaking annoying, but I don't know guys. I, I know it's gonna get better. I know it will. I just can't see the light at the end of the tunnel right now. And I'm sure that in three, six months from now, I'm gonna look back and be like, yeah, I, you know, I'm so glad that I got it done. But right now I would just be so happy to have no boobs right now. <sighs> day four. So day four, day three to day four post-op or technically day four, day five. I, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but um, we're very similar. I did still go through and go for a walk that day, but I was really not feeling myself again. Um, things really hadn't gotten much better. My nipples were starting to get a little sore. Um, I didn't take any medication in the morning, but I did take it as soon as I got back from working out or going on my walk because if you guys can see I did something a little bit I shouldn't have done I started to do laundry and I started really feeling it in my back I was still really scratchy in my throat which I wasn't prepared for but a lot of emotions were starting to come out this time guys I was not happy with it whatsoever and I didn't see an end in sight and um, I had to get past that. But just to read my notes that I had, it's gonna be very similar to what you guys just saw, but nibble slightly sore and painful, no medication in the morning, which means I didn't take ibuprofen until I got back from my walk. I did end up taking one um, when I got back from my walk, I believe, as well as later that night, because you get quite a few ibuprofens, it's the 800 milligrams. I woke up a lot in the night to pee, but that is only because I did drink a lot of water the night before. Because my bloating was so bad, I was going to see if I can drink a ton of water to get the, the swelling out of me quicker. It didn't help. <laughs> I just had to pee a lot that night. I was still very bloated, but it was less bloated than I was the day before. So day, um, th that Sunday post-op day three was the worst for bloating, um, but I was still bloated on day four as well as day five. I remember again, I called Nick on that Monday because he was at work and I was like, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I don't want to have them. See if you can just get them removed. Um, I, cause I, 
I was starting to think ahead to the future. It had been less than a week, but I was like, I'm going to start a new job in a couple of weeks. I can't imagine having to cover up or having boobs that just look like this. Um, I just assumed that I was always gonna look like this and something had happened and my, maybe my boob job got botched. I didn't know. I literally had him call and I was like, please, please, please call the nurse and see what we can do to get them removed. And no matter as much as they warn you against it, uh, people just assume the worst, which I definitely was. I was assuming the worst by this point that my boob job had been botched and that I should have just spent the extra money and gone Dr. Caravino, but I, I can tell you guys now, obviously that I'm sitting here, I'm really happy with the surgeon that I went to. I was just regretting everything. I was in a lot of pain day um, four, day five, whatever it's called. Um, and it just, it didn't look better. Moving on to day five, day five was a much better day. Um, my boobs at this point had started dropping a little bit and the swelling had gone down quite a bit. They definitely didn't look like how they look right now, but they started to look a little bit more like boobs. So that was a day where I woke up and I was like, I'm not filled with full, full regret. I actually feel pretty good about this. It's fantastic. I didn't take medication in the morning, but I did take medication at nighttime because um, I just wanted to get rid of the swelling a little bit quicker. Day six though. Okay, so you guys are balancing right now on four different boxes and I'm gonna kind of lean down here a little bit. So I skipped a check-in yesterday in case you guys were wondering. We have skipped from day four to day six. And today I would like to call magical day six. Why is that? Because today's actually the first day where I'm not completely regretting my decision to get a breast augmentation. I'm actually feeling pretty good today, besides the fact that I'm exhausted. And me being exhausted has literally nothing to do with the fact that I have a breast augmentation. Well, I mean, it kind of does. It's just, I couldn't sleep last night with the positioning of the pillows and it was really hot and just like, ugh, it just nothing really, I don't think that has to do with this, but didn't sleep all last night. But besides that, I will say that um, last night when I did sleep, because I was so uncomfortable sleeping in the reclining position, I kind of scrapped that. I gave up on it. Um, I'm still sleeping with two with pillows next to me, so I can make sure I'm sleeping on my back mostly, but I'm not using four pillows anymore to prop myself up. I'm now just sleeping with two pillows, so I'm still kind of at a degree, like a, an angled position. I would say I'm probably more at like a 20 degree angle. At this point, I'm not, I, I cannot sleep sitting upright. I need to get more sleep. And I feel like if I actually sleep, it's going to make my recovery process faster. So I'm doing it. I'm not even asking. I'm just doing it at this point. Um, also, when I'm sleeping now, I'm starting to go onto my side, not fully on my side, but like on my back while also like kind of crooked like this, just so I can feel some sort of normalcy while I'm sleeping. Cause I am a side slash stomach sleeper and I can't really sleep on my stomach for up to a year. So I at least want to be semi comfortable when I sleep. Um, other than that, my boobs are actually starting to look like boobs, which is good. Um, they have definitely started dropping. And what I've noticed is that I think it's my left one. So my left boob is definitely dropping faster than my right boob, which happens. I'm totally okay with it. Cause I'm I've done enough research to know that one drops faster than the other typically, and they'll both just kind of drop as it is. They're definitely starting to round out. I've been putting my face serums, like they're my expensive face serums on my boobs just to prevent the my skin from getting stretch marks. I'm sure that I'll probably still get some just because it's more of a genetic thing than it is um, the products that you used, but I'm gonna do everything I can to ensure that I don't get stretch marks because the biggest thing now isn't so much pain, it's now just I can feel the skin stretching. And oh, so the one more thing that just killed me a little bit today out of everything is my nipples. My nipples hurt so much. I'm not going with a bra. Like I, it was, I'm not going with a bra still just because my doctors told me not to wear a bra except when I absolutely need it. So like when I'm going for my walks and stuff, but um, my nipples were so sensitive and they still are. I feel like the skin's just stretching around them and I feel like literally everything's just gonna pop out of them soon. Um, that's just where I'm at with it. I did not go for a walk today. I have been going for walks nearly every single day, but it was just way too hot. And my, honestly, my nipples were just way too sensitive to even put a bra over top of it to feel secure when I went for a walk. So I didn't do any exercise or anything today. I'm feeling the most energetic, obviously, that I have been feeling. So I'm very hopeful that the next couple of weeks I will progress a little bit more and feel a little bit better. Also today is my first day where I haven't taken any medication so far. Yesterday, I, I on my Instagram, I did say I didn't take any medication yesterday, but before I went to bed, I ended up taking an ibuprofen. And like tonight I might take an ibuprofen. I, I don't know. I won't know obviously until tonight, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I think this is gonna be my last check-in. 
at least with this period. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing moving forward. I'm excited to see how they change over the next couple of weeks, but I feel like after the one week check-in, I might do like a four week check-in with you guys. So I'm not gonna be doing these type of videos. I hope you've enjoyed my coming along with me boob job journey. Yes. I will see you, I guess, in the future. <laughs> As you guys can see, day six was magical day six. It was a day where I feel like a lot of the anesthesia has left my body. I wasn't as bloated, bloated as I was the days before, and I started being like, okay, this is it. This is my body. I don't regret it. Getting a boob job is a very big surgery, guys. I know a lot of people get it done and you can prepare yourself as much as possible, but your body's going to go through it changes. And how I react and respond to getting a boob job is gonna to be totally different than how everybody else is gonna react and respond to getting a boob job. My friend who recommended the place that I went to, she's had it done, I think I mentioned this before, twice, and um, her recovery wasn't nearly as bad as my recovery. That chick was working out she wasn't lifting, but she was back in the gym that Monday after surgery, and I couldn't have done it. Even though I did rapid recovery, and they tell you that by day four, you can go back and start doing light cardio in the gym, I couldn't have done it. And I'm so glad that I didn't push myself to do that. So if you are watching this and you are somebody who is a runner, you are a fitness enthusiast, you need to give yourself time. That is my biggest piece of advice with getting a breast augmentation. It's hard. Even if you're working through and trying like in the best shape of your life, it's really hard to just sit there and be like, oh, well, I can go on a nice little jog. So I just won't let my boobs bounce or I can go back to the gym. Take the time to rest. I would say take a solid week off of work and do not do anything during that period. Don't judge your breast augmentation off of the first two weeks that you get them done. They will look so much better after the first two to three weeks, I promise you. Um, but it's going to look cray cray, like real cray cray for the first for the first week as you guys can see. So let me move into a couple of the questions that I have guys before I get into my six week update because I did get quite a few questions after my last video and then I did post it on Instagram to get some questions from you all. So let's go over that. Okay guys, I know that you all love when I do this, but my video is already at 50 minutes long. So I'm going to cut it off right here. I will have a second video going up. I promise it will go up Monday, not morning, Monday, evening for you all to go over any questions that I had on my Instagram as well as do a full six week update for you guys. That video will be about 20 to 25 minutes long so please keep an eye out for that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did like it please give it a thumbs up. I just didn't want to add in this portion with the Q&A because it would just been way too long and I know that some of you guys won't watch that whole video. So again it will go up. This is the one time where I promise you it will go up. I will get it edited and all for you all by Monday. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you did like it, like I said, please smash the thumbs up button. It really does help me out. And if you do come here, find yourself coming back to my channel quite frequently, click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell for when I do post part two to this video. And I'll see you guys next week.